Hello everybody, I'm Mike from the Rewatch Project podcast and I am a lifelong Star Trek fan watching classic Doctor Who for the first time. I appreciate you joining me and I am going to be covering the fourth part of the Marco Polo miniseries, uh, namely the episode of The Wall of Lies. Uh, this is a reconstruction of the episode because they have been lost by the BBC, hopefully to be recovered one day. Slightly more realistically, hopefully to be animated one day, but this is a fan-made reconstruction and I'm looking forward to getting into this. Again, I want to encourage you and also thank those who have already done it for posting on the comment section of the YouTube channel. I've been getting some great feedback, some great education, some great schooling from the Whovians. Uh, I don't know if that's a preferred term or not. Apologies. Hey, maybe that could be the next thing that you school me on. What is the parlance or the uh, the language used when it comes to describing the Doctor Who equivalent of Trekkies or Trekkers? See, all fandoms have their complexities when it comes to the naming conventions of these things. So, uh, But anyway, yes, enough of this nonsense. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to watch for the first time. This novice Doctor Who fan is going to watch the fourth part of the Marco Polo's Polo series, The Wall of Lies, right now. So let's see what this reconstruction has in store for us. Oh yes, we're in real subterraneous cavern adventure territory with this episode, which I find quite fun in a, uh, as I say, a sort of romantic, almost swashbuckly kind of way. Edgar Rice Burroughs. First, Barbara, and now the Doctor goes off taking Susan and Pinto with him. All right, Marco, you can be angry later. Let's get to this cave. Do you know where it is? Yes. He gets dashing, more dashing away every episode, doesn't he, Ian? He's what um, housewives in the 1960s, 70s and 80s would call dishy. You know, but actors like Nigel Havers would always be, he's very dishy, is what you would hear. It must be your imagination, child. These eyes didn't move. It's corpse. I saw them move, Grandfather. I swear I did. Oh, rubbish, child. Look, look. You'd have thought that the, the doctor would be cynical about nothing. You know, you know I mean, he shouldn't be scullying uh, anyone, really. I mean, because they do live in a world where anything is possible. Tragana. Tragana, the fiend. What are you doing here? If you must know, sir, we are looking for Miss Wright. Sir? Well, why would she be in this cave? Good day, sir. I think this is your answer. It is not wise to remain in these caves. They are possessed with evil spirits. I am not afraid of ghosts. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Oh, yes, I forgot. You're a magician, aren't you? <laughs> I'd never thought of the doctor like that, but he is. He is a magician in many ways. You know, the way he's presented, you can imagine him pulling something out, you know, the handkerchiefs out of his sleeve or uh, rub it out of a hat. <laughs> the TARDIS itself is a magic box. Is it safe for us to look now? I love how dandy Ian looks there. <laughs> Yes. And also, I mean, you know, Ian is the guy who comforts the women, you know, when uh, they they get emotional in that, you know, 1960s way. Um, and I think that that really helps solidify the fact that he is kind of the male proactive, you know, protagonist of the show, if not the main character. We were just in time to Ghana. A moment or two later, she would have been killed. What is that to you? I'm responsible for her safety. Why not let, uh, let, let them go on their way? My conscience does not permit it. Look, I took their caravan away from them. The least I can do is see them safely on their way home. You think Good man. You in such a steam? Only a fool defends his enemies. Cunning, Susan. Be warned, Marco. They will set us at each other's throats by lies and deceit, and then... Oh, very clever there. He's sort of, you know, sowing suspicion. Very good, good strategy there when for a warlord. Us, then they will destroy us. Tell him, Barbara. I followed Dagana there. Oh, yeah, you tell him. You will not share with Susan again. But Mr. Mark... Obey me! Oh, Trigana's seeds of discontent are working. You know, Marco's starting to think that uh, his guests are uh, conspiring against him. So, uh, yeah, very, very cunning. And again, the thing, I think the politicking with the guest characters in this episode or in this serial is definitely more engaging 
and more interesting than um, you know the equivalents in the Daleks and in an an earthly child cereals. Oh, evil smile! If only he had a moustache, he could twirl. As we journey southwest, the route takes us to the. So one of the clever things about this being a road trip, you know, travelogue, is I guess that it lends itself to being episodic. You know, you can have you, this is a seven-parter, so it just means that you can kind of move on to the next episode in the story. And met with an accident, so they came looking for me, just as I was about to enter the TARDIS. It was then Pincho saw the key. Divided loyalties, perhaps. I also like the clarity of the storytelling as well. These things can become convoluted, and you know that's what bad writing is. Bad writing is uh, convolution, and you know the storytelling here is so crisp and so clear, but without being condescending. And I, I really appreciate that. It's a very beautiful actress, the actress who plays Pink Cho. Stating the obvious here, of course. You know, all of the, all of the, and I, I, I don't mean this in any kind of denigrating. You know, I don't, don't mean to be a dog here or anything like that. But the, uh, all of the female characters in the show are, are very beautiful women, you know. And I think that it's, it's great as well in the '60s that you would see that you know these are actors who have real character to their faces as well. You know, it isn't this. Um, there's real diversity there in the, in the classic sense of the word. Um, it's not like, you know, if you watch uh, modern, a lot of modern network television, it's very homogenized. Everybody kind of looks the same and like they were hired from the same modeling agency. So it's great to see these incredible faces. Dangers. The happiest time of my life. If only we could find out, only we could prove that Tagana had seen the cave of 500 eyes before. Ooh. Wouldn't make much difference. Nicely recovered from that flub. Why not? And that's the other thing that's great as well is that, you know, this does happen. We know this, and again, I, I hand wave because that's the way that the production was done, very little rehearsal time, and they have to shoot almost in one go. But, um, you know, I think it says a lot to the kind of light-footedness and agility of the actors that they can cause correct. And people do make mistakes in everyday conversation as well. So, I mean, it's not entirely unrealistic. It doesn't, um, you know, take me out. I realise I paused to talk about it because I'm doing a reaction video, but, uh, but I think that they handle it very well. Your grandfather must have nearly finished the work in your caravan by now. Yes, Ping Chu, he has. Tigana, I tell you what, he's like bloody J.R. Ewing, isn't he? He's just always there at the right time to overhear these things and give the moustache twirl. Believe me, it will take much more than this to shake my confidence in Tigana. Oh dear. It was your fault. I'd be curious to know how this was audio was recorded, because I've heard fan recording. I mean... This doesn't sound like it was recorded on some, you know, jinky old uh, 1960s whole, you know, tape recorder, you know, pressing play and record at the same time, that kind of thing, you know, the red record button. Um, so I'm curious to know, there's very little hiss or whether it was just cleaned up afterwards. It's The, the audio is very impressive. I should let Polo die like um, an old woman in her bed. <laughs> There, here he comes. <laughs> He's so chilled out. He's happy. He's in his TARDIS. Oh, look at that belt. He's dressed like Mick Jagger at Hyde Park for the uh, 1969 concert. Stay here. Well, I should have thought that was pretty obvious. Be more explicit in... Oh, come on, Marco. We're friends, aren't we? We were. Well, why the sudden change? Oh, no. They're me, losing him. Why separate Susan and Ping Cho? Susan's a bad influence. Oh, you can't really mean that. Ping Cho's first loyalty is to me. Yet she backed you against the Ghana. Perhaps that's because we were telling the truth. It is possible, you know. You've got a bit of a blind spot for Tigana there, Marco. Tigana is a special emissary of Nogai, on his way to talk peace with Kublai Khan. He's a very important man. 
You are mysterious travellers. It's almost like he's basically got diplomatic immunity, doesn't he? That's the that's what we're seeing here. I'm sorry, I doubted your word, Tigana. Oh dear. They've just driven them closer together, haven't they? That is what you will precisely have to do, Polo. You need more than a key to enter my ship. You need knowledge. Knowledge you will never possess. Tell me. No. Understand? How does that work? I'd let you wreck it fast. Guards. Guards! I do like Hartner when he's indignant and stubborn. He plays that very well. He's instantly punishable by death. You Dear. are pathetic, stupid savage. <laughs> Take him away! He tell him. Oh dear. Another day of incarceration. By setting up a separate tent for the doctor. I forgot to mention, I was wondering who the actor was or the performer was um, that we saw at the beginning of the first episode. And of course, of course, it was the actor who played Marco Polo. Um, I just wanted to mention that, that, that I did realise that whilst watching the episode, but a few people have pointed it out to me on the comments. So, uh, yeah, that's um, it's great that he came back for, you know, this fan production. Wow, that's so gangster. Ian's kind of uh, fashioned a shiv. I think for the time I've finished with that gentleman, he'll only be too glad to let us go. <laughs> it's almost as if a doctor's just like, I'm going to be such a, a giant nuisance. He's just going to want to see the back of us. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, isn't it? This slightly mad, chuckly, eccentric figure. Not a very good guard. Great weird music. What? Okay, I'll take it back. Well, actually, no, he clearly wasn't a good guard because he got killed. Next episode, The Rider from Shang 2. One thing about these reconstructions is I do feel like I've watched the episode afterwards. You know, you, you readjust. It's a little bit like, you know, if you listen to an audio book, you feel like you've read the book, even though you haven't actually, you know, uh, engaged in the physical action of reading. And I can see why some people would be turned off by these, in, in the sense that some people are turned off by black and white films or musicals or subtitles. Um, but I think that, you know, um, if you are going with the show, it really doesn't feel like that much of a leap once you readjust to that. Uh, and it does seem that there are some episodes where there are more photographic source materials than others. For the most part, I'm finding it absolutely fine. And I'm finding this story really entertaining because it's pacey and the conflicts are interesting. And because of the fact that the story is always in movement, there's a great richness and diversity to it, which again, I'm going to be a broken record, makes it super tragic that this one's lost. But at the same time, I am glad that I made the choice to be a completist and watch these because I think they're working very well. So I look forward to getting back soon with the next episode of the Marco Polo miniseries, the episode Rider from Shang 2. And again, I appreciate comments on the YouTube channel. Please do share the podcast if you're part of the Doctor Who fan community. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you were to share that because the more people get involved, the more comments I get, the greater the motivation is to continue doing these uh, with, with uh, regularity so uh, I would really much very much appreciate that and also check out the main audio podcast that shares this YouTube channel the rewatch project of Hannah and Mike where we go back and rewatch some of our old TV shows as opposed to watching them for the first time like I am here so yes be back very soon with the next episode of Doctor Who and you be well and I will see you soon